Hi everyone, welcome to Steps to Language Analysis of an Article or Speech, Part 3, Persuasive Techniques. Now remember you can pause or rewind this video whenever you need to. Now let's just recap on what we have learned, a very quick recap this time. Uh, what you need to do when you're analysing an article or speech is first to read the background information to discover the writer or speaker the audience that the piece is intended to persuade or is aimed at, and the purpose of the piece to inform, to persuade, to entertain, or to instruct, and about what. Then you read the article all the way through once. If you don't quite understand what the article is about, you read it a couple more times. Now, in this first big reading, what we're looking for are the overall tones that are present and any tonal changes. We also want to to discover what the contention of the piece is. So that main idea, what side the writer's on and what they're trying to manipulate you to believe. So that main point of the article or speech. Then after we've figured out those two things, we read it through another time. And this time we break it into sections and we put a positive, negative or neutral and what or who they are being positive, ne negative or neutral about. And this, these summary points help us lead into finding five to seven identified arguments that support the contention. So really important that we're able to do those summary points to be able to find those identified arguments. Then of course we had to change our summary points into identified arguments using the six categories criticism, positive outlook, present self, call for action, questioning, and offers a solution. And of course, those summary points that we made about the positive, negative, or neutral direct us towards some of those rather than others. And these were our identified arguments that we came up with for Beach Lessons by Zan Smith. And then of course, we checked to make sure that our identified arguments support the contention that Zan Smith was putting across. The next thing we did was look at the language used that supported Smith's arguments, those arguments that we had identified. And that means the next thing we're going to learn about is persuasive techniques, but we're going to continue to recap on the languages. So you were asked to get four different colored highlighters or pencils or pens, whatever you had highlighters are best and highlight four of the identified arguments. Now, remembering that anything we highlight in our um, article now gets the same color of the argument that it's supporting. So those pieces of language that we found, those words we found, if they were there to support that first argument, then they would be highlighted in yellow. If they were there to support the second argument, they'd be highlighted in blue. So remember that the color coding is super duper important. We look at one argument at a time and we find the sections that these arguments apply to. So it's us looking back on our notes on the article and making sure that we're focusing on those particular parts that this argument was present. So we don't want to go into other parts because they apply to different arguments. So we decided that these three first paragraphs were to do with um, this argument of Smith is a parent who's letting people know that he tries hard to keep his children entertained indoors without resorting to the television too often, but he isn't perfect. So connecting with his audience through uh, presenting himself as that parent who isn't perfect. So we read through those three paragraphs and we highlighted those words that really stood out to us um, and that really drove home that point of the argument that he was presenting. Now we get to focus on identifying persuasive techniques because of course in a persuasive piece the author is using particular words to get us onto their side and also persuasive techniques. So in your English resource book, you have a huge list of persuasive techniques um, that looks like that picture there. And there are many, many more in the world. Uh, we just tried to narrow it down. 
But these are the sort of things you should be looking for. And if you're unsure of what they mean, looking them up in the persuasive techniques table in your English resource book will be really handy to learn what they are. So we have the appeals. These are a whole lot of different appeals, appeal to authority, appeal to common sense, appeal to fear and insecurity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of appeals that happen and it's appealing to that particular nature or that particular thought. Anecdotes and scenarios, expert um, or opinion, so it can be an expert opinion or just a random person's opinion, uh, counter arguments and rebuttals, visuals, super important, and we'll talk about this shortly, that you include discussion of all visuals that are used in any of these articles or speeches, factual evidence, the layout, format, colour or shading, because it might be um, in a magazine rather than in the newspaper, but even the shading of the newspaper can make a difference. Comparisons, questions. We do say rhetorical questions, but just because it have a, has a question mark after it doesn't make it a rhetorical question. It might just be a question. The attacks or praises, so two different things. One's attacking, one's praising. Punctuation that's used, so including um, the way font is typed, so your italics versus your bold, um, but also those exclamation marks, ellipses, all of those sort of things. Humour, if humour is used. Irony and omission, so actually leaving stuff out of what they're saying can be very persuasive, so they're leaving things out on purpose to get you onto their side. So these are some of the persuasive techniques that we'd like you to look for when we're trying to identify the persuasive techniques that help get the writer's arguments across. Now, because we're looking at this first argument, Smith is a parent who's letting people know that he tries hard to keep his children entertained indoors without resorting to the television too often, but he isn't perfect. We make sure that we're still using that yellow highlighter. You see that the language used that we've already highlighted is there in the yellow, but now we're looking for the persuasive techniques as well. So I found two persuasive techniques here. I'm not going to read through this part of the information again because I know it's actually not, um, there's no other persuasive techniques that I can use in there. But the image is a persuasive technique here because he's talking, at one point he's talking about his um, children sitting in front of the TV, unchanged, um, unmoving, just doing what they're doing. So reducing them to the kind of inertia. So I know that's a persuasive technique because it's an image they use to uh, get the point across. And also this caption, captivated by the screen, but how much is too much? So the caption to the picture is also a persuasive technique that's used. And I'm actually going to put that under the category of question. And again, like we did with the language, jotting those ideas down, the image of the little children watching the TV and putting in brackets that little bit of context or description here for this. So it appeared to be motionless, just staring at the screen. And then I've got the questioning, uh, which I forgot the, to close my quotation marks on. Don't you forget to do that. Um, of captivated by the screen, but how much is too much? And then in the brackets, that's the caption of the image because if I'm going to discuss it in my essay, I need to be able to put it in context. So this is where this appeared. This is what it was talking about. Now, it's not always going to be as straightforward as an image and a caption. You do need to consider all the persuasive techniques that are there that you can look for. Um, so, you know, some really obvious factual evidence, i.e. statistics. But you need to make sure if you're highlighting these persuasive techniques that they do actually help strengthen or support the argument that you're identifying them as supporting or strengthening. So keep that in mind. If you're just highlighting stuff because you're like, oh, there's a statistic, awesome. You've really got to consider, oh, is he using that to extend his argument, to really strengthen his argument and get his point across? Or is it just there because it's just a bit of information? So really considering what the important persuasive techniques are. 
Now that we've done that first one together, it's your turn to do the other three. So when you're looking at Smith, Smith questions the use of technology in schools and how much it is taking over students and teenagers' everyday lives, remember to go to those particular sections to have your blue highlighter with you or whatever colour you have allocated to that identified argument and looking for those persuasive techniques that are involved. Sometimes it will only be language. So don't freak out if you can't find persuasive techniques in there. Sometimes it might be the tone that we can talk about for the persuasive techniques. So keep that in mind as well. But look through, see if you can identify some persuasive techniques. Good luck.